December 30th, 1776, Washington and his army are in Trenton, where they had defeated the Hessians just four days earlier. They expect to be attacked from the north. Ten miles up the road, thousands of British and Hessian troops are gathering in Princeton, preparing to march to Trenton. Washington positions some of his men halfway between Trenton and Princeton. Their assignment is to delay the inevitable British advance. Back in Trenton, Washington's forces are ready. January 2nd, 1777. The rebels' newfound confidence is about to be tested. General Cornwallis and a massive force are marching toward Trenton, eager for an all-out battle. Along the way, Americans engage the British in a series of skirmishes, delaying their advance. The delays are costly to the British, who finally reach Trenton at sundown. Washington and his troops have taken positions on the south side of the Asun Pink Creek. This is the Second Battle of Trenton. Three times the British attack the Asunpink Creek Bridge. Three times they are repelled, taking heavy casualties. As darkness falls, the Americans are encamped on one side of the creek, the British on the other. The Redcoats expect to easily defeat Washington the next morning. In the night, Washington had some of his men build fires, and they could hear sounds of digging. They thought, oh, the Americans are entrenching there on the hill. No, they're trying to keep warm with all these fires. Meanwhile, Washington's whole army marched by back roads and completely outflanked the British army that was sitting in front of Trenton. And the next thing you know, in the early morning, they attacked the British garrison in Princeton. This time, the frigid weather is an asset, turning muddy roads solid, enabling Washington and his men to move through the night. It is dawn, January 3rd. American General Nathaniel Greene is leading his troops on Quaker Road, heading north to Princeton. A mile and a half from town, they encounter British troops heading south. With a ferocious British bayonet charge, the Battle of Princeton begins on the farms of William and Thomas Clark. of the chaos, Washington arrives with reinforcements and inspiration. He rode down the line between the British and the Americans and gave the order to fire while he was right there in between the two lines. And one of Washington's aides, uh, uh, Colonel Fitzgerald, put his hat over his head, over his face like that because he thought sure Washington was a dead man. And this huge billow of smoke rose from the muskets on both sides. And when it cleared away, there was Washington still on his horse. It was just miraculous. 
The Battle of Princeton is another stunning American victory, another cause for hope. General Nathaniel Green wrote about the startling turn of events. The two late actions at Trenton and Princeton have put a very different face upon affairs. And a good many British officers began to doubt that the American war was winnable. And this only a few weeks after they thought that it had been won. Following victory at Princeton, George Washington decides to march north to Morristown, New Jersey. He will spend the winter with his wife Martha and his most trusted officers, rebuilding the army, planning future strategy. The war is certainly not over. There will be six more years of fighting. But there has been a remarkable turnaround. A British historian later summed up the battles of Trenton and Princeton. It may be doubted, he wrote, whether so small a number of men ever employed so short a space of time with greater and more lasting effects upon the history of the world. If the Americans had failed at Trenton and Princeton, or either one of them, they would have become peaceful, submissive, obedient, servants of His Majesty George III, and the whole uh, marvelous spirit of, of, of independence and liberty that has animated this country would have really vanished. In those 10 days, as 1776 gave way to a new year, despair gave way to hope. Gloom was replaced by confidence, and a new nation, still in its infancy, was beginning to stand on its own.